There's this thing where it will caption um, uh, as I talk. So I'm going, to, I'm going to turn that on. It's going to be distracting, so just don't look at it. It's, uh, if you can hear me, you don't need that. This is for people who might look at the video later. Um, uh, yeah, welcome all. Uh, this, here's the link to these slides if you want them. There's also a link on the conference website on the session description, which I just put up there. So uh, you don't, you can take a picture or just go check the website. Um, yeah. So, who am I, uh, and why do I think I know something about presenting? Um, so my name is Matt Quirks. Um, I've been building websites for a pretty long time. I'm guessing that's the case for uh, lots of people in this room. Uh, I've also been uh, speaking about Drupal for about 10 years, starting here at the Montreal Drupal Camp. Um, so I've had some practice at it. Um, uh, I've spoken twice at DrupalCon North America. Um, uh, I also was one of the organizers for this event for about three years. So. Uh, there's lots of people who are, know way more about presenting than I do, but I, I do think I know the basics. Uh, oh, and I have to throw this slide in there. In case anyone knows somebody looking for a job, I won't try to poach you from wherever you are now, but uh, we are hiring on our team. Anyways, moving on. Uh, who are you folks? So who in this room has given a presentation before at a conference? Three of you. Three. Can I just want this count? Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, more than three people, like not just your immediate colleagues. Yeah, you, you were standing up there, you probably have some slides. Yeah, great, so that, that counts. Um, uh, and for people who didn't put up your, name, your hand, who wants to give a presentation, or who hopes that they will be able to one day give a presentation? <laughs> okay, that's not everybody, but more of you. <laughs> that's great. Um, uh, and so what are... What are some things that you're hoping to uh, to pick up today, to, to learn uh, in this session? Just try to find out what I don't know okay. about, about it. Find out what you don't know? Great. Anything else? Um, how to write a, how to brainstorm the idea for a proposal. How to brainstorm the idea for a, like for writing the proposal? Like or, some, yeah. or the call idea for some call for some mission? Like the whole idea for the talk, or how to write it up? How to write it up. How to write it up. Okay, great. My needs is about the same thing for me. Okay. I've been really picky on the conference I assist, and so yeah. I, I, I want to give one, but I want to make sure that the, the, the content is on, on, on target and, and interested everyone in the room. Okay, great. Is so anyone else? Okay. Uh, I'll, do my, I'll do my best to, to cover that. Um, what we'll cover today, so uh, why I hope uh, to see more people um, giving presentations at conferences, um, how to get comfortable with doing it, so just the stage fright part, that's, that's a thing in and of itself, and then how to actually structure the, the presentation um, uh, once you've gotten over that. Uh, great, so why should you do it? Um, it's a, it's a great confidence booster. If you, if like 50 people or however many people come and listen to you for an hour, uh, when they could have been going to 10 other talks, that's pro, uh, and then come and talk to you um, afterwards and give you feedback, it's um, good validation about your skills, how what you know, um, what you, um, uh, or you'll get advice like, oh, that part you could have done a little differently. Um, uh, it'll, you, when you teach something, first have to make sure you know it really well, so it forces you to go and like do that research uh, to round out your knowledge of whatever your topic is um, uh, uh, in a way that you wouldn't have to normally. Um, uh, all of you, I'm sure at some point you've had to, well you've all gone through at least one interview I'm guessing, so you've had to present yourself sometime. So it's good practice for that. You Even if you don't give a, a talk at a, um, at a conference, um, you probably have like clients or potential clients that you're giving presentations to. Um, uh, if you work internally in a large organization, you have other departments, other stakeholders, and you need to convince them that your plan for your project makes sense. So this is good practice for that. Um, 
Also, uh, it can, at least in my organization, it can mean that you get to go attend more conferences. Um, I went to DrupalCon this year um, because I was speaking, otherwise my employer probably wouldn't have paid my travel expenses. So if you like going to conferences, it's good for that. Um, uh, sorry, I'm skipping slides here. Um, uh, uh, after giving uh, talks at conferences, people have come up to me and asked if I was looking for a job. They've asked if my agency would be interested in taking on a contract, so it's very good visibility that way. Um, and uh, if you work for a large organization, it's, uh, it's um, visibility within your organization. Um, if uh, I'm not saying this about myself, but if, if hypothetically you were looking to move within your organization or move up to it, uh, like a more managerial role in the upper level, it's a it's, uh, very good practice for that too. And visibility. Um, uh, and finally, why? Um, uh, so IT, as, as all of you I'm sure know, or you could figure out by looking around uh, at any software conference, has a serious problem with representation, um, with, uh, with the demographics of who's, in the, uh, who's working in this industry. Um, part of a solution for that is having role models for people from underrepresented groups. If, you, uh, if that is something that you think you can do by speaking at a conference, um, uh, research shows, and my, from my understanding, that uh, that can encourage people who are earlier in their careers to, um, uh, to consider working in IT and consider your, your field, our field. Uh, yeah, so to start. Uh, who here is scared of getting up, up in front of other people? <laughs> yeah, that's very common. Yeah, it's, uh, you're not alone. Um, uh, the good news is that this is a skill that most people can learn. It's all about practice. The, the, all the people I see who are great at speaking, if I go and look at, at their CV at LinkedIn, I see they do a ton of speaking. The, the very best conference presenters I've seen, they're basically professional conference presenters, that, like confu or like the, the bigger ticket conferences like that. They're people who fly around the world and do nothing but speak at conferences. And unsurprisingly, they're great at it. So this is something that you can learn. You just have to have to practice. Um, uh, a couple of ways that you can practice if you're not familiar with these. There's a, a non-profit group called Toastmasters. It's, it's just for people who want to give speeches or presentations in a business professional context. So they just sit around giving practice speeches to each other. The speeches can be about anything. That's not the important part. You stand up in front of a room, you, you have to talk, and then you're, you're going to get some feedback. Uh, they also have um, activities like competitions for like teenagers, younger kids. Uh, if you've got a kid who you think might be interested in that or who you want to be interested in that. Um, uh, an interesting one is improv comedy. Um, improv comedy has gone surprisingly corporate. People have realized that if you can stand up on stage and make a fool of yourself and like make up jokes, then you can really get over stage fright really quickly. And so a bunch of improv comedy clubs have noticed this and they've cashed in and are marketing this. So if that sounds more fun to you than Toastmasters, that's an option. Um, there's even uh, open mic storytelling. It's this thing, uh, you might have heard it on like a podcast like The Moth, for example. So you just get up and tell a story that's supposed to be true about yourself. I don't know how much fact checking goes on, but the point is you're on stage and you're talking and afterwards people will say, oh, that's great, or that part there, you looked a little awkward. Uh, I personally didn't do any of these, but I've done a bunch of amateur music, uh, musical performances, uh, starting since I was, when I was a kid, so then you're up on stage, and if you screw up, a lot of people will notice, so I got over, personally got over stage fright that way, if that's your thing. That's another way to do it, and I'm sure there are lots more. Um, I'm going to move on now to how to give a presentation. Um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, and if you, for those of you in the room who have given presentations or different ideas, please don't hesitate to uh, uh, give me give your suggestions or uh, if, you've, if you've got different ideas here. Um, but I'll start with what's, uh, what's worked for me and what I've seen work well when I see other people give presentations. Um, so I started with a quick summary. Um, so you, uh, at conferences like this, there's usually a bunch of presentations going on at once. So you want the right people to, to, to stay in the room, and if it's, the talk isn't for someone, then you want that person to know that and go to some other talk right at the beginning so they don't waste their time and, and your time. Uh, when I go to conferences, I usually like circle two or three things on the agenda at once, and I'll go to one, and I, but I've always got a plan B if the presenter or the content isn't what I was expecting. 
Um, so that's a good thing to do. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, then you need to have a goal. What What do you want somebody uh, to know when they walk out? What are you tr What are you trying to to teach them or demonstrate or explain? Um, so examples might be that you're presenting on security and you want someone to to realize that some new security issue that they haven't heard of is very important, is something they should follow. Um, confidence in a brand new um, piece of technology that they haven't seen, uh, that they can learn how to use um, uh, Node.js or Varnish or whatever. Um, or uh, project management, that's a popular, um, there's, there's usually a couple of talks at this conference about like how to use, how different parts of Agile work. Um, and that's how I personally learned about Agile from going to conference presentations. So, uh, what do you what do you want people to? How how do you want them to to feel uh, when they when they walk out? What's their takeaway? Um, and what do you want them to remember? So, in your slides, um, uh, put a few key points and share your slides. Always share a link to your slides, please, folks, um, so that people aren't frantically scribbling the whole time. Um, uh, put some put some points in your slides so that uh, people can go back and review and refresh their memory when they're back at their desk or they're explaining uh, what they saw in your great presentation to their colleagues. Um, but uh, hopefully people are spending more time listening to you than, than reading. Uh, I personally have a bad habit of putting too much text in my slides, so um, I'm not saying to copy my example there. Um, yeah. And then, since you want them to come away feeling like they learned something, like they're, they're able to uh, do something new when they go back to, to work on, on Monday or whatever, um, give them some links, like give the names of books, some links to blog posts. Um, if you show code, please uh, uh, share a link to that code. Put it up on some public repository somewhere. Um, if it's code from your work that your boss won't let you share, um, then make a cleaned up version with dummy dummy values and like all the passwords out and put that up. Um, uh, please take a few minutes to share your code. If you just look at a whole pile of code for five minutes on a screen, um, that's very different than being able to go back and read it line by line and figure out that tricky part that you didn't quite get in the presentation. So share, share resources and that will make your talk um, uh, more useful. Um, now I'm going to talk about some uh, principles to keep in mind when you're organizing your talk. So, uh, uh, where to start? If you're talking about some uh, fine detail of um, optimizing your CDN, don't start with some configuration style, uh, some some detail about the configuration file. I would suggest that you start start with the big picture. Don't assume. Try to. Make your talk accessible to people who already know something about what you're describing and people who have never heard of it, for whom this is a brand new concept, who have never heard of Agile project management, for example. So give it at least a quick overview to put everything in perspective um, so that people know where you're starting from. And then um, uh, a lot more people will be able to find your talk useful. Uh, uh, so this, you can talk about uh, who in, um, who invented this technology, who, who's built it, where, what it's building on top of. You can talk uh, with any piece of tech, there's usually five other things you could have used instead. So why did you choose this one? How is it better? How is it worse? What are the advantages? Um, what is, what's, the, what's, the good, what's its use case? And what's, um, what are examples of, uh, of a use case where you should be using something different? Um, uh, most tech has like, some uh, assumptions. Um, like you'll require a certain runtime, or like it, uh, it only makes sense if, for people using iPhones or whatever. So explain all that, and don't assume everyone in the room uh, has has that familiarity, because you're trying to, to aim your talk at everyone. Uh, next up, um, when you learn things, just like as a plant grows, your uh, it's it happens gradually. Um, if you want some large, complex understanding of, uh, of a piece of tech, you need to, to start small and build with that. So uh, uh, pick, uh, start with some really easy examples that are just a couple lines of code that anyone can take in quickly, and then keep adding new ones on top of that. Um, you might not get to the end, 
Um, you might need, if you have to stop and answer a lot of questions, uh, you might not have time for that, but that's fine. That means that, that you're uh, explaining the basics to more people. Um, yeah, so you, you're not going to be able to cover everything in your talk, every, but you're trying to, it's, give a conference presentation, it's like a, like a movie trailer. You're just trying to give the highlights and get people interested to sit down at their desks and do the hard work of actually learning the technology and using it themselves. So you're the, you're the uh, uh, in a world uh, like little trailer that's just trying to hook people and get them interested to, to go in and spend the hours that it takes to, to, uh, to learn how to use whatever it is you're describing. Um, and you can do that by showing a few uh, key examples, like cool tricks, like representative moments, just like uh, in a trailer for a movie with a lot of fighting, there's going to be at least one explosion, and then that tells you, okay, this is what you get if you're coming to this movie. And if you don't like that, go watch a different movie. Um, mention, um, but so give simple examples that show the general principles, but always reference the fact that there are other things that you can do, um, uh, further possibilities, and give some link to, or some, some pointer to some reference where they can learn even more. So make people want to go home and learn more about whatever you're describing, because it's a cool new piece of technology, right? Um, uh, but while you're doing all this, um, so uh, uh, you, uh, you have to remember that the, the presentation is it's not about you, um, by which I mean uh, the point of a presentation isn't um, uh, of getting up and talking for an hour isn't to show off what an expert you are. You're not uh, auditioning for something. Um, you're trying to build the audience's understanding of something. If you're, if you're not sure if you know something well and you need some affirmation about that uh, and you just want to talk to show off your knowledge of it, this, a conference presentation is not the time and place to do that. Um, you, you're hoping to uh, enable the audience to, to reach new heights and build on each other. Uh, so uh, uh, you can, uh, to do that, um, uh, try to focus on, if you focus on teaching, uh, teaching things and not just describing all the fancy things you did in your project last week, um, the audience is going to find that more useful. Um, uh, your, uh, yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, try to keep, try to start with small examples, but and keep keep that focused so that uh, the, the your talk will be useful to the people who are listening and not just um, uh, not just something that shows off your vast experience. Uh, and then if there's if there's some tricky question at the end uh, and somebody needs to know that thing, they'll ask you or maybe they'll like like contact you on Twitter after or something. But um, don't try to just show up as much, uh, how much you know. Um, although that said, I personally feel like it's okay to um, talk faster than people can write notes because you're giving them the slides. So um, you can mention something and just say, here's the link, and then move on. So, but make sure that people understand the, the big concepts um, instead of um, uh, talking too much about the little details. And uh, yeah, as I said before, if you need to skip a few slides at the end, uh, be ready for that. So, uh, like, build build to that, um, uh, and somebody should be able to take away something from the first eighty percent of your slides without needing the ones at the end. Uh, and if you don't, if you if you don't know something, for example, if you um, uh, definitely if you get a question and you don't know the answer, maybe someone else in the room does. So uh, uh, don't uh, be be willing to say when you don't know something. Uh, the the next point. Um, make sure as many people as possible can uh, uh, can access the content of your talk. That's why I turned on these little uh, this captioning at the bottom of the screen. So this is a photo of a staircase in front of a, a courthouse in Vancouver. So there's a whole bunch of steps going up to the side of other level, but that thing you see going zig uh, going across diagonally is actually the the wheelchair ramp or the the ramp for somebody with a stroller, for example. So it was integrated <coughs> into the rest of the staircase, which I uh, was a I thought was a really great example of accessible urban design. The uh, the stairs keep going up on the right, but so the wheelchair ramp goes right to the top as well. Um, so by which I mean. There's a few little things you can do. You can um, uh, you can describe uh, 
um, you can describe pictures. Uh, in my case, I also put um, uh, alt text in, uh, so that if someone is attending who, uh, in the back, and they have poor eyesight or are blind, or they're watching a video later, that they still um, uh, know what you're know what you're describing, as opposed to just putting up a graph and sitting back and waiting for, for people to look at it. Um, uh, it can help if you if you describe the pictures that you're showing, tell people why you're describing the pictures you're showing, so that they know when they go and give a talk next week that it's a good thing for them to do too. Um, yeah, uh, if somebody asks a question, uh, only if the people sitting around them are going to hear it, you have to repeat it for the people in the back. Um, if, you, if there's sometimes there's a microphone in the room for the people asking questions, but if somebody doesn't use that, you need to repeat it. You also need to repeat it so that in the recording, because there will probably be a recording, that question is captured. Um, and uh, a pet peeve of mine is people who ask if the people at the back can hear them. If they can't hear you, then they're not going to hear you ask if they can hear you, right? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, so don't, don't do that. If the room, these rooms are small enough and they're set up with the chairs raised so everyone can hear pretty well, but uh, if there is a mic, if the people who designed the building put mics there, it's probably there for a reason, use the mic. Um, uh, another, ex um, uh, another example of accessibility is in choosing examples. I sometimes see people thinking kind of carelessly about how they um, uh, pick the examples they, of their real, real world use cases in the slides. Is anyone uh, uh, familiar with the concept of implicit bias? It's a, yeah, it's, um, this is a concept, uh, there's a link, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this, but the, the, the main point is that um, you, it's possible with technology to uh, measure people's stereotypes and implicit, uh, implicit biases uh, about things that they're not, biases that they have, which they are not themselves aware of. Um, you can do that by like showing people two pictures and asking them to rate which person looks friendlier, but what you're measuring is reaction time on the keyboard, or like tracking their eyes. Anyways, interesting stuff. But you have to try to try to think about this um, consciously in order to uh, and be aware of it in order to counteract that. So here's a good example, another pet peeve of mine. Um, people sometimes ask me if something I'm designing is easy enough for my mother to understand. Um, which really annoys me because my mother was a computer programmer programming mainframes in the 70s and yes she can figure out your smartphone app and if she can't the problem is not her. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not normally a big Dilbert fan but uh, uh, this, this one, um, this, this slide, uh, this cartoon uh, I think sums it up well. So the, uh, yeah, the boss is asking uh, uh, if the interface is easy enough for Dilbert's mom to understand uh, Dilbert says, uh, yeah, my mom taught herself Ruby on Rails on the weekend. Uh, the boss says, can you imagine someone else's mother? And Dilbert says, can I imagine a sexist imbecile? Which is a pretty good answer. That's, that's mostly what I said to those people who asked me that question. Um, yeah, uh, as I said before, put your slides online, link to them from the session's description. There'll always be a field or a comment or something in there. It's a simple thing to do, but but I feel like less than half the people I see at Drupal conferences don't do it. Uh, uh, do it. Um, in Google Slides, uh, you can put an um, alt text, uh, just like on your website, so you can put an alt text for videos and for images, so do that. Um, Twitter, if you promote on Twitter, you can enable a, um, an option to write a description of any image you paste, and it does not count towards your character count. It's just a separate new field that's only accessible uh, to blind read, read people and people using screen readers, so use that. Um, uh, you can turn on captioning in Google Slides if, if that's the presentation tool you're using and you don't find it too distracting. Um, and in, uh, in YouTube, you can add subtitles to your talk. Uh, probably the talk is being posted by someone else, like the conference organizer, but you can ask them to enable what's called community contributions. That means that anybody in the world can suggest subtitles on your YouTube video, but you still need to review them and approve them. It's not. So don't worry about spam. Uh, I, I asked the organizer of this conference to do that. I haven't heard back yet, but uh, 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 hopefully that happens. Um, finally, uh, I'm going to give a couple of bonus tips. Um, uh, you need to, I, I was talking about the importance of practicing. So after you, you think your slides are good, 
go uh, find an empty room, uh, book a meeting room in your, in your office or whatever you need to do, and do your whole presentation. Uh, just check the timing, check how it, uh, uh, because you'll be speaking out loud that's different than writing something that people will consume just by reading it. So make sure it makes sense, and then the flow from one slide to the other makes sense um, when you do it out loud. And if you have time, ask uh, a couple colleagues to sit there and listen. But for, do it alone in a room first. And don't, don't subject them to that. Then afterwards, if someone's got time, you need to do a dress rehearsal, uh, especially if you're new at speaking. That will, that will help your presentation and it will help your confidence as well. Um, uh, I'm sure you'll make mistakes when you're presenting. Everyone does when they're getting up and performing in front of people to some degree. But uh, just like in music, if you just keep going, um, uh, people, uh, it, it'll be fine, and most people won't notice, and they, they definitely won't judge you for it. Um, if you if you've got a bunch of numbers and you can throw them in a graph, like um, improvements in performance time or something, if it makes sense to put it in a graph, put it in a graph. Um, yeah, uh, try to ask the audience questions. Definitely ask who is already familiar with what you're talking about, so that you can uh, adjust your level of explanation. Um, uh, and know, so you know what to spend more time on or less time on. Um, uh, to help you remember, you can, you can make a slide that just has a question. Um, uh, yeah, and then, uh, and then you'll be able to adjust the, the, the talk because you're speaking live in front of people. You're not doing a, recording a video that people are just going to watch at home. So take advantage of that. Or if everyone's kind of looking confused, you know, stop and ask if there's a, something you need to, to explain. Um, uh, finally, I'm going to go on a tangent. So this is uh, this tangent is about why representation at conferences and otherwise in IT, um, I, why I think it's important, uh, which is why I chose to give a talk about this as opposed to some technical concept, which I'm more used to doing. Um, thank you for coming to this talk, even though I've never talked about doing presentations before. I appreciate the vote of, uh, of confidence. Um, yeah. So, why I did this? So we're we're all building websites for somebody. Um, who here is building websites for which the target audience is 80% men? Okay, what about 94% men? Anybody? You, right. That's what I thought. So here's who uh, uh, contributes code to Drupal.org. Uh, the last most recent numbers I could find from 2017 was about 6% women making code contributions. I know there are many other ways to contribute to the Drupal community besides uh, code, like uh, reviewing things, organizing presentations, writing documentation, but, but this is uh, one stat I have. Uh, DrupalCon North America, um, the most recent numbers I could find, both attendees and speakers are somewhere around 20%. Um, so 6% is lower than, even lower than IT in general in North America, but open source tends to be lower than IT in general. Um, probably for a few different reasons. So these are the people who are building websites. Um, but we want everyone to be able to look at the websites. So there's something here that doesn't make sense. Here's something that doesn't make sense. So here's uh, this, this, uh, the, this title at the top. It says, uh, Uniting Efforts for Breastfeeding. Uh, can anyone think of someone else who these men could have invited to this talk who would have had some experience, <laughs> maybe, or some expertise in breastfeeding? Yeah. Don't do this. <laughs> so our, uh, the websites we're, we're building might not be quite as bad as this, but it's still, it's still pretty bad. Now I'm going to show you an example from tech. I'm going to show you a piece of technology which I suspect was built by an all-white engineering team and see if you can guess why. So maybe some of you have seen this. Let's see. So here, somebody getting soap from a hand dispenser. And then here's his buddy trying to use the same one, but the sensor doesn't trigger. Yeah, this is this is a, I'm told this is surprisingly common. Um, obviously, I haven't had this problem. Uh, this is a this is a Facebook engineer based in uh, Nigeria. Yeah, but he's got a hack. He's an engineer, so he knows how to work around this. He takes a white piece of paper, and that's how he gets his soap out. Yeah. This is, so can you guess the demographics of the team who built this, this uh, little sensor and sand dispenser? Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, how do I, oh, hang on. Yeah, 
So that's where we're, that's, uh, as most of you probably know, that's where we're at in, in IT these days. Um, but better. an interesting example is the Word, WordCamp in Vancouver. So in 2013, somebody noticed that, that their, the, the percentage of women speaking at their event was uh, typical of IT, and so, but they decided to do something about that. Uh, since 2014, they've had over 50% women speakers, um, and they have a, now they go around and they do presentations about this, and they explain to other conferences how to improve representation uh, at their conferences. So yes, something can be done about this, um, uh, because the whatever the problem going on here is, it's not because. Uh, um, obviously, the problem is not that women are somehow unable to do uh, programming. Uh, and for, if you ever meet someone who thinks that, here's, some, here's a graph. So all these lines going up. So here we have rates of participation in uh, uh, people studying uh, uh, medicine, law, uh, physical sciences, and IT, computer science, over the years in North America. So they all start low, between 5 to 15% in 1965. Everything's going way up, and then somewhere in the early 80s, all the women start stop, sign, uh, stop signing up for IT programs, but the rates for all these other fields keeps going up. So what happened there? I don't know, but there's obviously nothing genetic if you ever meet somebody who uh, still, for some reason, believes that. Uh, as another example, in India today, um, in undergraduate and graduate programs in computer science, uh, more than half of the students are, are women. So. It's something cultural. cultural. Uh, and how can we do something about that? Uh, one way is by role models, and, and to be a ro one way to be a role model is by speaking at a conference. And now you know at least a little bit about how to speak at a conference, so uh, I hope you do. Uh, uh, finally, I just have some references. Most of the talk, about the part about how to give a presentation, I borrowed, stole, uh, whatever, from uh, Jen Kramer. But uh, here's a link to how she explained it, so uh, thanks to her. Um, the Linux Foundation has a, um, a free training on um, how, to, how to choose inclusive examples when you're presenting, and they talk more about implicit bias, um, if that's interesting to you. The Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Working Group is uh, a bunch of volunteers who, among other things, have a resource library and a very active Slack channel um, about this general topic. Um, and the Drupal North uh, website has some interesting links on, on how to uh, prepare your presentation as well, um, which could be useful to check out. Uh, and with that, um, I'll turn it over to questions. Here's how to contact me, or does anyone have any questions now? I answered comment. everything. I have a comment. Yes, please. Um, one thing that I, my only experience has been giving lunch and learns in my sure. company. Um, and I've done a lot of those. And, and my peers really on that, so I'm hoping to expand. Yep. But one of the, my pet peeves is in company meetings, um, the speakers rarely explain what the acronym is that they just dropped or oh, some yeah. piece of business speak. I think you need to presume that your audience does not know what EBITDA means in the financial world. Yep. I certainly didn't. And I was yep. just annoyed for the rest of the meeting. Yep. Because they just assumed that I knew what this financial term was. Yeah. Don't. Uh, yeah. So don't. Don't use. So a, a, something not to do is to drop a bunch of acronyms or uh, lingo that maybe people in the room don't understand. But they probably they probably understand the concept, just not just not the. Uh, if, if you take five seconds to explain it, they ex understand the concept. Oh, sure. Yeah. But not the not the lingo. Yeah. Um, and it's perfectly yeah. fine to keep using it, but just yeah. you know, explain a positive it. to the to the. Yeah. That's a, yeah, if you don't know for sure that everyone in the, in the room knows the lingo, then stop and explain it or spell out the acronym. Um, yeah, when they, when they started at, uh, at McGill a couple of years ago, there's a ton of acronyms, which I'm guessing is common in large organizations. And sometimes I'd ask people what the acronym was, and nobody, nobody could remember what the acronym stood for. They all just know these three letters means this thing. It was really funny. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to, but, but people would assume I knew the acronym because everyone else who had been working there for 10 years knew, so I'd have to stop and ask. Yeah. So at least make time to stop and ask. So thanks for the comment. Put your hand up. So how do you choose like, topics you want to speak? Um, if, if you don't find the topic interesting, then neither will your audience. 
Um, so uh, I've personally always just chosen something I've learned. It's either something I've learned recently that I'm really excited about, that I've like you know done some reading on the side about, or um, uh, sometimes it's uh, like I um, like I did a talk yesterday with uh, my colleague, which is a case study about McGill, and I gave that because um, uh, I, uh, my colleague and I thought of that because. We've noticed that case study presentations are pretty popular at conferences, that people find them useful. Mm -hmm. So uh, some combination of those two. Like what do you, if you see there's um, um, talks about this type of thing, but that one thing, but um, this type of technology, but one example of it, which you know well, nobody's talking about, um, that, would, that would be an example. But something, well, it has to be something that you find interesting and uh, that you've got at least some amount of like passion or excitement for, uh, uh, or otherwise, like your your audience will, will be able to tell. I, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, is that, that a good that, that a good answer? Um, uh, other questions, yeah. comments, feedback. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, one of the slides you said that you adjust your explanation according yeah. to the knowledge of the audience. Yeah. Would you also adjust the content? Let's say if you don't know the audience and you are right something. Uh, adjust the content. Yeah, well, while you're speaking, you probably can't adjust your slides, but uh, um, I've, uh, yeah, like sometimes you might pre prepare a couple slides on something that explain it, but if everyone in the room already knows it, then you'll just skip those slides or um, go back to it. I often see presenters go back to a previous slide. If you're asking a question that was, if you describe something briefly on one slide and then five slides later, they ask a question, you see they didn't fully understand that because it's a new idea to them, you can skip back to it, so uh, they have a visual uh, example. So you can do things like that. Uh, or, um, uh, uh, yeah, if you've got time, especially at the end of your talk, you could bring up a website that shows an example <coughs> or uh, like go find that blog post, but mostly by like how much time you spend on different slides or whether or not you skip them would be the main way I would personally do it. Mm. That sound good? Yeah. Any, any other comments, questions? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Using, uh, I don't know if it works with Google Docs, but with uh, PowerPoint, if you hit the B key, the screen goes black. Okay. So if you want to focus the attention on yourself, the speaker, okay. so they're not looking at the screens. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a good tip. So you said that hit the letter B in PowerPoint and the screen goes black. So then they look at you. Yeah. Um, another tip I've seen is have a slide that's just completely blank. And then as soon as you put that slide up, everyone's heads are going to turn to you if you want them to listen to what you're saying. Um, uh, another uh, colleague mentioned um, a technique. He said he's, he's heard it being used in Japan where every slide only has one word. So then people, uh, it's just a little to drop your memory about what you're going to, to speak about. But uh, then people aren't spending time reading because, uh, well, they'll read with one word and then they'll look at you. So yeah. Or um, a slide with just a picture, uh, which is why I put some of those things. But yeah, I think that's a, that's a good, good tip. I didn't know that keyword. Uh, other comments? I think pauses could be very useful too to help delineate between sections of the presentation. Pause, pausing between sections? Yeah, I, I tend to just speak really, really quickly and not and barely take time for a breath. But uh, yeah, give people time to stop and like, especially if you ask a question, give people time to stop and think about it. Um, uh, that, that's a, that's a, a good point. Make it digestible. Um, other, other comments? So who, who here feels, uh, how do we put this, uh, more ready to give a presentation than they were previously? Uh, at least a few hands. Great. Most of you even. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered. Um, uh, I also... I offered in the session description to uh, go and look at your slide deck um, and give feedback. I don't think we've got time to, to, to go do that for everybody now, but if, you, if that's something you're interested in, uh, you can, can find me in the hallway or contact me my email or something. Um, I, am, I am definitely uh, willing to take a few minutes and give you some feedback if you haven't done this before, and that would be helpful for you. Um, yeah. And again, here's how to, how to contact me. Uh, uh, I think that's it. So, any last questions? Or Thank you. Great. Thank you.